We will call the council meeting to order. Uh, Councilor uh, Snell, would you please do the invocation? Shelly, would you please do the roll call? time I would um, ex uh, entertain approval of the minutes that were mailed to you. So moved. Second. Got a motion second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Do you have a quorum? Speaker. Yes ma'am. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda to move item number three from new business to um, right now before the state of the nation also to include three items that we brought forward from committee meetings this morning and they would move to the end of the new business and be numbers 12 13 and 14. second got a motion and a second any discussion all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. all opposed we will do the uh the moving item number three Number three, that's a resolution electing the officer of speaker for the Cherokee Nation Tribal Council. So I'll put that in the form of a motion. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 So at this time, if our justice is here, we will do the appropriate swearing in. Protecting the defend the Constitution of the Cherokee Nation. The Constitution of the Cherokee Nation. And the United States of America. And the United States of America. I swear or affirm further. I swear or affirm further. That I will do everything within my power. That I will do everything in my power. To promote the culture. To promote the culture. Heritage and traditions. Heritage and traditions. Of the Cherokee Nation. Of the Cherokee Nation. Back in 1987-88, when uh, Wilma Mankiller was chief and John Ketcher was the deputy chief, at times the uh, deputy chief would have other business to take care of. And that's when I was the youngest guy on the council, and he would allow me to chair the council meetings. That was close to 28 years ago. So it's been a full circle here, and I'm honored to, to take on this role, and I will... As the, as the oath said, I will do the best of my ability to make sure that I, I try to take care of the Cherokee people. So with that, uh, we'll move on to our State of the Nation, Principal Chief uh, Bill John Baker.
OCO. Welcome to the September council meeting of the of the Cherokee Nation. You know, we just came off of a wonderful Cherokee National Holiday where uh, I don't know what the final count was, but I know that there's more people here this weekend than I've ever seen before. It was uh, truly amazing. We had uh, uh, over 70 tiny tots come out for the uh, at the powwow. Uh, we had more veterans than I've ever seen. Uh, the parade line was fuller, and uh, best I can tell, there was a good time had by all. Uh, this new council got their first opportunity to travel uh, back east to uh, the old Cherokee Nation and uh, find many wonderful and great things and people out there to, uh, to visit with. And, and so we went to Red Clay, which was the last capital before removal in the east, there in Red Clay, Tennessee, uh, where all three tribes sat in council, which uh, was a dream of elders, not only in our tribe, but in the other tribes as well, to complete that circle of all three uh, recognized Cherokee nations coming together for one purpose, the betterment of all Cherokee people. Uh, the, we've been very busy at the tribe. Uh, our uh, departments have had, uh, Career Services has had uh, hosted a job fair for the Macy's Fulfillment Center. Uh, Macy's said it was the largest, best uh, recruiting effort that they'd ever had, no matter where it was in the country. And uh, in that first few hours, they uh, hired... Uh, over a hundred people into full-time jobs, many of them Cherokee citizens that uh, were the least of them is $17.50 an hour and many above that. So uh, we're very proud that uh, that partnership with Macy's uh, is working and working so well. Uh, we've launched the online uh, car tag renewal system, which will save our people uh, a lot of time. Uh, plus the traveling to uh, to our tag locations, and so far so good. It is working extremely well. Uh, we broke ground on the new uh, Cherokee convenience store just across this parking lot uh, that will be bigger and better and brighter. Uh, I think Sean told me that it's going to be the only new modern convenience store that uh, you can walk from the pumps inside and be out of the rain. So... That ought to be a plus for, for a lot of our elders. The uh, Saturday or Sunday to watch OCO TV, uh, Shelly Britton uh, is beaming back here. Her son was one of the features on it, but uh, the folks are just always doing a better and better job of that OCO TV, and no matter where I am, in the Cherokee Nation or outside, <coughs> that people are not talking about OCO TV and what a wonderful uh, uh, educational tool it is, what a wonderful piece of, uh, uh, of uh, artwork it is to bring people up to speed on what's coming, uh, what's gone on in the past, and what's coming up in the Cherokee Nation. Uh, we've got a special recognition today that the uh, Cherokee Nation earned accolades uh, and the Chief's Award from the Department of Interior, uh, this is uh, our Public Law 477 program, which is in our workforce uh, program. This award was given uh, to the tribe at the recent uh, National Indian and Native American Employment and Training Conference in Durant, Oklahoma. And uh, pass that around. Uh, and a special thanks to Career Services Department, uh, self-governance staff, for ensuring that the tribe's excellence in managing of these funds, and these funds will help improve Cherokee lives. And I uh, thank you to uh, all the staff for their diligent work. Then we come to the portion of the uh, State of the Nation where we recognize those uh, Cherokee citizens that were with us last month that are not with us this month, and bear with me, uh, it's uh, unfortunately an extremely long list this month. Dorothy Bark of Tahlequah, 
Willie Butter of Grow, William Buzzard of Tulsa, Alva Carroll of Jay, Stephen Clinton of Stillwell, Autumn Cochran of Siloam Springs, Jesse Dawson of Salisaw, Jason Dean of Sperry, Rebecca Dugan of Tahlequah, Linda England of Tahlequah, Edward Feathers of Stillwell, Monty Nadine Gardner of Catoosa, April Gaylord of Collinsville, Randall Hammer of Westville, Danny Isaacs of Stillwell, Billy Jackson of Bartlesville, Rebel Jackson of Locust Grove, Andy Johnson Jr. of Tahlequah, Corey Jones of Stillwell, Billy Keller of Grove, Donnie Kirby of Siloam Springs, Ramona Lamb of Siloam Springs, Nicole Langringham of Bartlesville, Roger Leach of Tahlequah, Pat Patricia Lotion of Tulsa, Carrie Morton of Locust Grove, Ricky Perkins of Inola, Lily Phillips of Tahlequah, Stephen Rayburn of Tulsa, Stephen Riddle of Claremore, Larry Schneider of Muskogee, Donald Scott of Vanita, Jim Shell of Stillwell, Eva Slover of Tahlequah, Thomas Snell of Grove, Nikki Soap of Stillwell, Irvin Summers of Jay, Louise Teehee of Stillwell, Adam Van of Tahlequah, Paul Van of Salisaw, Wilma Vaughn of Chelsea, Connie Vernon of Tulsa, Ray Walden of Locust Grove, Dorana Whaler of Tahlequah, Edward Wilson of Salisaw, Helen Wimberly of Jay, Miles Wolf of Pryor, Mary Workman of Bartlesville, and Velma Zachary of Salisaw. Does the council have others? Yes, we have Bobby Tanner. Bobby Tanner. Roy Farrell. Roy Farrell. Okay. I have uh, Judge Bill Shaw. If we can have a moment of silence for, for these uh, Cherokee citizens. Well, do that completes the State of the Nation. <laughs> This time we'll go to the Cherokee Warrior Veterans Awards. Mr. Speaker, we have three veterans to present the Warrior Award and Medal of Patriotism to this evening for their service to this country. Our first veteran, and Janice Taylor, would you, Council Lady Taylor, would you come down please and help with this? since this gentleman lives in that area. The first veteran is Frankie Barnett. Frankie, would you come down, sir? Let's give Frankie a hand. <laughs> Frankie Barnett served in the U.S. Army from June of 68 through June of 70. He received basic and advanced infantry training in Fort Polk, Louisiana. He served in Vietnam from November 18, 1968 through November the 15th, 1969. He was with the 1st Battalion Mechanized 50th Infantry assigned to the 173rd Airborne Brigade in Anh Ke, An Ke, Vietnam as a 4.2 mortar operator. 
He was then assigned to the first field forces in Van Fiat, Vietnam. Returning stateside, Frank served in Fort Lewis, Washington from November of 1969 until June of 1970 as a target detection instructor. Frank's honors include National Defense Service Medal, Vietnam Service Medal, Vietnamese Campaign Medal with 60 device, Campaign uh, Combat Infantry Man's Badge, Bronze Star Medal, Good Conduct Medal, Two Overseas Bars, Expert M14. And Frank Barnett, thank you, sir, for your service to this country. Our next veteran this evening, Mr. Speaker, is John Ernest Petty. John, come down, sir, please. John's got a little story I'm going to read here and uh, some history. Truce talks between Communist China, North Korea, South Korea, and the United States began on July the 10th. 1951, but fell apart after a little more than a month on August the 23rd. Allied Commander General Matthew Ridgway wanted to apply military pressure to persuade the communists back to the negotiation table. During the first week of October of 51, the 24th Division moved into Nine Corps Line, Wyoming sector to relieve the 7th Infantry Division, sandwiched between the 2nd Republic of Korea Division to the west and the 6th Republic of Korea Division to the east, the 24th Infantry Division's 5th RCT took position on the left. The 21st Regiment was positioned to the center and the 19th moved into position on the right. On the 13th of October, the Allied troops launched an aggressive push against Chinese communists deeply embedded in the mountains before them. The objective was to push the Chinese off their fortified winter lines and also to take the city of Kum Song a key supply center from enemy troops, but between the Allied positions and Kum Song stood a series of forbidden objects, including Hill 770. Hill 70, 70, 770 was built to withstand heavy attacks and house the Chinese command post, Chinese soldiers, and supplies during the coming winter months. The terrain was extremely steep, barren, and slippery with rubble. Cover for the attacking troops was nearly non-existent. Allied troops were easy targets as they climbed upward under hails of gunfire, mortar, and so many grenades it was reported that it looked like flocks of blackbirds coming over. By each day's end, many 24th Infantry Division platoons were left with only a handful of men. The pipeline of replacements was running with the tap wide open for the first few days. After that, everybody who could carry a gun or a stretcher including cooks, were brought in to replace the fallen. After five straight days of fighting, the 24th Division reached their goal. Tonight, we have the honor of meeting a veteran who was part of the 24th Infantry Division's 19th Regiment, responsible for taking the hill and come song, Mr. John Ernest Petty. Mr. Petty was injured on October the 16th, the second day of the off offense. Today, he is 100% disabled. He is the recipient of the Combat Infantry Badge, a Purple Heart, two Bronze Stars, Korean Service Medal, United Nations Medal, and the Silver Star, Mr. Petty. Thank you, sir, for your service to this country.
Veterans Service Center. And I'd like to thank my wife for coming up here right now, very slowly. <laughs> and we'll bring the camera back. Yeah. Get on here, ma'am. <laughs> She's been my rock. We've been married for 64 years. Wow. Oh, wow. She supported me uh, throughout my 23 years of military service. And you are my rock. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'd like to uh, say something about the rest of my family. I'm so proud of them. Yes, come on up and picture. We'll let them come down too. Yeah, you know, my, my oldest son is in California. He was here recently. I've got a little story to tell you about him. His name is Jay Penny from San Francisco. And he wears his hair quite long. He came down to get his Cherokee card and went over to uh, get it, brought it to Amarillo, looked at it, it hadn't done as a female. Under <laughs> <laughs> sex, it had a nip. That's what he's going to do about it. So take it back and get it changed. <laughs> so we came back to Tahlequah and got it changed a few months ago. And uh, when he came out, after about five or ten minutes having it changed, I said, Jay, you had the fastest ch sex change I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so even faster than Bruce Jenner. <laughs> so now I'd like to introduce my lovely daughter, standing right there. Patty was a school teacher in Wichita Falls, and uh, her husband Dave, Dave Layfelt. Dave is employed by the city of Wichita Falls himself. And Look who's here. They surprised me. <laughs> Emily, my great-grandson, and my great-granddaughter sitting over there nicely. <laughs> and thank you for coming. We appreciate that. And uh, that's not all. That's the one I'm going to talk about next. <laughs> this is Tony Petty, my brother. Tony was not in the military, but he always wanted to be. And I made him an honorary sergeant just on my own. <laughs> Love it. Tony's from Fort Worth, mm -hmm. and his lovely daughter, Tanya, mm -hmm. she came up with him. Mm -hmm. And Tanya, remember the days we used to have the family reunion in Lake uh, Austin's Kingdom Lake? We had fun, did we not? <laughs> okay, uh, Jeff, it's her youngest son. <laughs> He's not here today. Okay. He's in California. And the reason he's not here is because uh, we just, uh, he just flew in to Little Rock, Arkansas a few, about a month or so ago, and we had a nice visit with he and his family uh, in the Hot Springs Village. And uh, Emily, Emily blessed us with these two grand, great granddaughters. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. <laughs> Is that maybe anybody else? Yeah, you did. Cousin to that. My cousin Bodie and J uh, JL. <laughs> One more picture with everybody. And our third veteran this evening is a gentleman, John Anthony Plunkett. John, come down, sir. John Plunkett received basic and advanced infantry training at Fort Benning. He then served in Bamberg, Germany with the 1st Armored Division, 154th Infantry, Company C, 1st Platoon, First Squad, where he was an armored personnel carrier M113 driver and M203 grenade launcher, M16 infantry squad member. He served in the United States Army Reserve from 86 to 90 as an S3 trainer and operations sergeant with the 95th Infantry Division Training, 3rd Brigade. His primary duties included coordinating rangers, evaluating training and drill sergeants, and serving as opposition forces during exercises. 
From 07 to 12, John served with the U.S. Army Oklahoma National Guard in the 45th Infantry Division, 1st Battalion, 179th Infantry, as the Anti-Terrorism Force Protector, Protection Sergeant and Company Non-Commissioned Officer and Public Affairs Officer. He was deployed to Bukha, Iraq from January to October of 2008, where his primary duties involved Singar's radio operations and Blue Force Tracker. His honors include two Army Achievement Medals, Expert Infantry Badge, Expert Rifle Marksmanship, Bronze and Silver Star, uh, Track Vehicle Driver Award, Bronze Wheeled Vehicle Driver Award, Bronze German Army Marksmanship Badge. And Mr. Plunkett, thank you, sir, for your service to this country. Just wanted to thank the tribe and to introduce my fiance Tammy Gearhart, um, Vietnam veteran, my uncle Ronald Carter, and one of my commanders from Iraq and at Stillwater for us the incident. to um, unfinished business. We have none pending. Uh, committee reports. Um, Housing Authority, Mr. Gary Cooper. Mr. Speaker, members of the council, good evening. I know that you've had a long day, so I'll keep my report very, very brief today, and I reported to you just a few hours ago in committee. The Housing Authority Board of Commissioners meeting for this month will be next Tuesday, uh, the 22nd of September at 5.30, and those takes place at our offices here in Tahlequah. Um, there is uh, uh, one announcement that I wanted to make um, a few weeks ago, uh, actually last week I believe it was, um, HUD announced that the Deputy Assistant Secretary Roger Boyd, who had been at um, Office of Native American Programs, you, you know him, Speaker, for 13 years will be retiring uh, next month. Um, so uh, I, I do think that um, HUD does have a, a have a, have a, uh, they have staff there at the office who can lead in the interim, and I'm confident that um, um, they will work very diligently and work with Indian Country uh, um, to uh, find a suitable replacement to uh, the Deputy Assistant Secretary. Um, the Housing Authority continues to provide all types of assistance to a number of uh, uh, families. We have more than 6,200 families that we provide assistance to each and every month in some, in, in some form. And I think that's something that all of us, especially us at the Housing Authority, but I think all of us as a nation as a whole um, should be proud of because that's uh, uh, housing assistance that we provide to a number of folks. That assistance includes all of our federally funded programs, whether they're managed units like apartments and homes, whether there are rental assistance programs or college housing programs, or a community shield insurance program that we offer in conjunction with Amran Risk Management that provides uh, um, a, affordable homeowners insurance to more than 2,600 families um, each and every month. Um, as I promised, I cut out several things. I know you've had a long day and you have uh, uh, several things you need to get to here in the agenda tonight, so I will leave it at that unless you have any questions, and I'll be more than happy to answer any of those. Yes, Councillor Taylor. And you are welcome, because I understand that there was a lot of elderly ladies yes. 
who needed to watch their co- uh, college. college football. So, I appreciate that. so we got it on for them. We, we figured out what the problem was, and we got it fixed. Mm-hmm. Any other questions? Thank you, Gary, for that Thank report. You. This time we have our Cherokee Nation business CEO, Mr. Sean Slayton. Good evening, Council. Good evening. I've had a great summer at the businesses. We're running about $12 million ahead of where we were at the same time last year. My hat's off to all the employees for their hard work, which has allowed that to happen. Additionally, uh, in the month of August, we contributed an extra 300000 in tax collections to the uh, tax commission. Our projects are winding down. Uh, down at Roland, we uh, went ahead and did an early dem- demolition of the hotel and the, the old casino there. Uh, we were really in desperate need of some additional parking, uh, and so that's being converted into uh, a parking lot. So uh, we're, we're glad to get that behind us. The hotel should open up about the 1st of uh, December. Wrapping up the clinic, still have a few odds and ends here and there. Uh, we've had an issue up at Jay's, you know, with the um, water table. Uh, and I think we've identified the problem there and are working on a solution to, uh, to solve that. As uh, Chief mentioned a while ago, last week we broke ground on the new outpost here beside the complex. A little more information about that. It'll be a 5,200 square foot store. Uh, we'll have 16 gas pumps, four diesel pumps, and the CNG station will be relocated. Uh, as he mentioned, we'll also uh, provide an, a canopy that goes from the uh, gas pumps to the station to, that'll be covered the whole way to keep people out of the, out of the rain. Uh, Inside the facility, uh, guests will be able to enjoy indoor seating, a self-service food and beverage area, a merchandising area, and a kitchen and and food service area. Uh, The plan is to keep the existing store operational during the construction if if we can make that happen. We've owned this station for nearly two decades, and and uh, as with everything else, times change, and we need to update the offering there. I appreciate everything that the employees have done throughout the years with that, that facility, and uh, it certainly contributed to the nation in other ways than just the, uh, the normal uh, uh, sales that go through there. That was the basis, that and Outpost 2 in Fort Gibson uh, for the initial fuel compact uh, that's contributed millions and millions of dollars to the Cherokee Nation. Uh, At the Cherokee Springs Plaza, we announced uh, that the national restaurant and and food chain Buffalo Wild Wings will be one of the residents there. We're anxious for that to get started and open, and also a a new and larger Stuteville Ford of Tahlequah. Those are our first two tenants. Uh, we're currently negotiating with other companies to uh, fill the remaining pad sites, and that's going very well. We've had a lot of interest and can even afford to be a little selective with what we're doing there. Uh, we're very appreciative of the support that we've received uh, from Chief's Office and also from uh, Council, uh, as well as the, the City of Tahlequah and Cherokee County. Everybody's working together to make that happen. I um, wanted to also say that Cherokee Nation Technologies, one of our diversified businesses, is working alongside the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and NASA to uh, advance weather forecasting capabilities. Uh, this effort is focused on using unmanned aircraft systems to, for- to form forecast models for the Hurricane Center. Uh, the Agencies are directing a series of flights over the Atlantic Ocean with unmanned aircraft to collect data on temperature, humidity, pressure, wind speed, and direction. And the inaugural flight of that uh, just occurred on uh, August 26th when it departed Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia and flew directly into Tropical Storm Erica that you may have heard about. 
the, the mission was very successful and produced a lot of information that they'll be able to use to uh, further predict storms more accurately. Very proud of, very proud of uh, that uh, Cherokee company. Uh, this is the first real-time information that's ever been provided to hurricane forecasters. Cherokee Nation is uh, celebrating 10 years of the best of the Cherokee art market with a special exhibit at the Hardesty Art Center, also known as AHHA, that's running until November 1st. Uh, the Cherokee Art Market a Retrospective features previous Best of Show winners from the annual competition, which features many of the best Native American art artists in the country. The celebration of past winners leads up to the return of the Cherokee Art Market on October 10th and 11th at Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Tulsa. The Hardesty Arts Center is located at 101 East Archer Street in Tulsa's Brady Arts District. Gallery hours are Thursday through Sunday, 1 to 5, and first Fridays from 1 to 9. Our uh, American Quarter Horse Meet kicked off this past weekend at Will Rogers Downs. Races begin every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at noon and have 12 races. Um, the 2015 racing schedule features 28 AQHA, Ipalusa, and Paint Stakes races. So they're, they're well underway up there. Our current employment at CMB is 6,479 employees. 4,740 of them are uh, our employees. When you exclude the uh, contract and temporary employees working for the government, our Cherokee percentage is 73.6% with other natives at 8.1 for a total Native American employment of 81.7 percent. Thank you, and that's on the companies that we're able to, to uh, practice a preference with. That concludes my remarks, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Sean? Yes, Councilor Taylor. We've had problems with that. And we're working to identify it. Yes, we are relocating that, so uh, we'll be trying to troubleshoot those issues. Yes, Councillor Lay. Thank you, sir. Uh, the land sale at Kellyville, I believe it is. Yes, sir. Has that? I forget when it was going to take place. Has it happened yet? I, I don't know the dates on that. We're going to auction the property. It's been on the market for two or three years, and really haven't uh, had any luck with that. We'll set a, a floor for that and see what we can do with an auction. If, if and when it sells, will the tribe, the government side, get the 35% or what? how does that work? Um, I'm not sure how that will work, Dick. I'll, I'll talk to Doug tomorrow and have him, uh, have him figure out, according to GAP, how that works. But... My guess is you'll get your 35%. <laughs> We're looking for it. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for Mr. Sean here? Okay, good report, Sean. Thank you, sir. No old business pending, so we'll move down to new business. Uh, Councilor Vasquez, would you take uh, item number one? Yes, this is a resolution confirming the reappointment of Linda O'Leary as registrar for the Cherokee Nation Registration Committee. And I put this in the form of a motion. Second. Put a motion and second. Discussion? I would like to add one thing. Uh, although she could not be here tonight, she was vetted and interviewed extensively in committee a few weeks ago and passed with flying colors. So we are thrilled to have this appointment filled again by Linda. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Walkenstead. Just make a comment. Um, uh, Linda has, has cut down her time on our registration from two years to 18 months, and she, she, uh, she's expected to get down to six months before she's, she's uh, done with the 
you've done a really great job in speeding up the process of registration for our church business. So I'll leave it to that. Okay. Any other comments? Yes. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, ayes have it. Um, item number two, Councillor Taylor, would you please take that? Got a motion second. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain. Okay, one abstention. We will do the swearing in for her now. <laughs> Just repeat after me. I, Lacey A. Horn. I, Lacey A. Horn, do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute the duties of treasurer of the Cherokee Nation. The duties of treasurer of the Cherokee Nation. And will to the best of my ability. Will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the Cherokee Nation. The Constitution of the Cherokee Nation and the United States of America. And the United States of America. I swear or affirm further. I swear or affirm further <coughs> that I will do everything within my power. That I will do everything within my power to promote the culture, heritage, and traditions. To promote the culture, heritage, and traditions of the Cherokee Nation. Of the Cherokee Nation. Congratulations. Thank you. We've already addressed item number three. Item number four, Councillor Baker, would you please take that? Yes, this is a resolution of elected officer deputy speaker for the Turkey Nation Tribal Council, Victoria Vasquez. And I make a motion that it should be approved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> she will be sworn in as well. my ability and I'll do the best of my ability preserve protect and defend preserve protect and defend the constitution of the Cherokee Nation the constitution of the Cherokee Nation and the United States of America and the United States of America I swear or affirm further I swear or affirm further that I will do everything within my power that I will do everything within my power to promote the culture, heritage, and traditions. To promote the culture, heritage, and traditions of the Cherokee Nation. Of the Cherokee Nation. Congratulations. Item number five. Uh, Councillor Critton, you want to take that? It's a resolution electing to the office. Secretary of the Tribal Council, Frankie Hardy. I want to put that in the form of a motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Congratulations, Frankie. Item number six. Um, Councillor Warner, you want to take that? Yes, sir. Uh, this is a resolution uh, confirming the nomination of Janelle Fulbright as a board member of Cherokee Nation Business, and I put this into the form of a motion that she be approved. Got a motion. Second? Second. Okay. Discussion? She did get come through our committee. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Congratulations, Ms. Janelle Fulbright.
Item number seven, Councillor Vasquez, you want to take that? Yes, this is a resolution authorizing a limited waiver of sovereign immunity. Put this in the form of a motion. Got a motion? Second. Got a second? Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, ayes have it. One abstention. Item number eight, Councillor Taylor, would you take that? <coughs> Got a motion and a second. Discussion? By yes, by acclamation. All in favor, say aye. Aye. By acclamation. Thank you, Counselor. Okay, item number nine. Counselor Taylor, you got that again. Motion in the second. By acclamation. By acclamation. All in favor, say aye. 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 By acclamation. Thank you, Councilor Baker. Item number 10. Uh, Councilor Austin, you want to take that? Got a motion? Second. Got a second? By acclamation. By acclamation. All in favor say aye. Aye. By acclamation. Thank you. Okay, last item number 11, Councillor Taylor. Got a motion and a second. Discussion? By acclamation. By acclamation. All in favor say aye. Aye. By acclamation, okay. And we've added three new items on the agenda, B12, 13, and 14. Uh, Councillor uh, Argus, you want to take that? This is a resolution authorizing the food distribution program to submit an application for funding to the United States Department of Agriculture, and I put that in form of a motion. Second. Got a motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Item number 13, Councilor Lay, would you please take that? A resolution authorizing the submission of an application to the United States Department of Health and Human Services for year end 16 funding for low income home energy assistance program. Lay, he put that in form of a motion. Second. Got a motion and second discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Item number 14. Councillor Buzzard, could you please take that? Motion and a second. Discussion? Yes. May Councillor Baker? As a sponsor, please. Yes. See, everyone wants to be added as a sponsor. Raise your hand so Shelley can see your hand. I do not. Okay. We've got one abstention. I don't understand. Okay. I don't Just on the, on the sponsor. Okay. Okay. You got it, Shelly? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, the ayes have it. I think that just about concludes. That's everything. That is everything. Uh, down for announcements. We'll start over here on this side here. <coughs> Good. Anybody over here? Well, I'd just like to commend the council members that did attend the Tri-Council. It was very historic uh, to make that, that trip, and we had our historian, Councilor Baker, with us, and I know some of you new council members went, and it was, it was very moving to be there. Uh, sometimes it's kind of grieving to be in a place like that, but then there was a lot of happiness as well. Also, um, we did have a very good Cherokee you know, National Holiday, I'd like to commend all the employees from the maintenance to, you know, they're really helping us with the, with the traffic flow. It's gotten bigger every year, 
and uh, we've outgrown our facilities. Um, the restaurant of Cherokees can't accommodate that many people at one time. Our powwow facilities cannot accommodate that many people at one time, but those are good problems. And we'll leave some of that to Mr. Sean Slayton here because we keep increasing <laughs> our revenue. So uh, I think the guy can handle it. With that, I say, Uli Helis Nagadi Jizalaki. Wadon, thank you very much. Motion to adjourn. Motion, second. Wadon.